We're back here in Alaska with Jeff Wosley and Four Flyways Outfitters. We we're with Jeff earlier and we took a look at basic hunting gear for waterfowlers. This time we're going to take a look at guns that work and not just guns that work anywhere, but up here in Alaska. Of course, Alaska is not the place you want to come to test your gear out. By the time you get here, you want to know how it works and what you have to do to keep it performing. Uh, I've lived in Alaska for years, traveled throughout the state to, for over 30 years, and I prefer a gas-operated gun when I'm hunting personally. Uh, one of my favorites, hard to beat, is the old uh, Brownie Maxis here. But Jeff knows a lot more about this than I do. He starts guiding up here in September. He'll guide uh, all the way through uh, January, saltwater hunting, some of the roughest conditions. Jeff, what do you do? What, or what do you like when it comes to guns and keeping them working in these tough conditions? Well, firstly, I like people that are familiar with their guns, know how they shoot, know their chokes, know their loads. So when you show up, you know what your gun's going to do. Uh, and someone's familiar with a gun, it's hard if they get a brand new gun for this trip and haven't shot it much. And uh, it, it could lead to some struggles early on. But day in and day out, we look for guns that are going to operate in salt water. And salt water is a unique challenge with the corrosive effects. We also have this volcanic sand up here. It's very abrasive. So you throw in low temperatures, you got three factors that really test a shotgun. And over time, um, I mean, a pump will always work. You take care of a pump, good old 870 or what have <laughs> you, they'll work. But uh, modern gas shotguns have come a long ways. And uh, I think the top of my list are uh, the Brett A400s for reliability and just corrosion resistance and uh, very quick tear down maintenance and uh, just overall they're a very good gun. Um, another one of my favorites that unfortunately are not currently being made are the Remington Versamax, uh, the, the black model. They did like a trinite coating and a lot of stainless internal parts. They hold up great to salt water. And I, I actually shoot them better than the Beretta. So that like my personal gun, I'll have one of them. But either one of those two, um, fast to clean, they work. You know, day in and day out, they work. Um, Maxis are great, SX4s, I had good luck with them. They just take longer to completely de de you know, take apart and clean everything and some of their components aren't as uh, corrosion resistant. So I would say the A400 for the current guns on the market are gonna hold up salt the best, they're gonna shoot every time and uh, they, don't, they don't knock the crap out of you. They have really good recoil management in them. So uh, the newer ones, the A400 Extreme have the really uh, the high uh, rib and the big knob. The older ones, uh, don't have the big buttons, but they're basically the same gun and they work. Yeah. So, and you're hunting in September, it, you know, it might be 60 degrees up here, but you're in salt water. The other right. day I was laying out there hunting Brant and, and it was a nice sunny day and in some of that tall beach grass and a strand of it blew into my mouth and it tasted like salt. Yeah. You know, so here it was a nice sunny day. I mean, you're, you're in the elements and then you're out on the, the, the cold bay side, you know, getting pounded by you know, the Pacific Ocean, then out to St. Paul for King Eiders. So what do you do when it comes to, to cleaning these things? So basically, if you want your weapons to last, if they get salted, we're gonna clean them every day. If we're doing a hunt where we're not in salt water, no big deal. Cause we're not, we're cleaning to get rid of the salt. We're not worried about the powder residue from a few shots. So if you're in a layout boat or you're out in St. Paul in the boat and you get a lot of spray for whatever reason, um, we're going to bring the firearms back here and you can either hose them off outside with a garden hose or put them in a shower, but basically take fresh water to the gun, turn them upside down and spray them off good, removes most of the salt. Then we're going to bring them inside. I let them hang, you know, put them upside down on the rack, let them dry a little bit, completely disassemble them, uh, dry off the parts and then oil them up and put them back together. But, uh, we found that uh, for salt water, this corrosion block just, it works as a good gun oil, but it really is designed to fight salt water. Where your average average stuff like REM oil or CLP, they're great, you know, and that you can get by, you know, people are coming up for a week, right? Well, I'm up here for five months, so. Yeah. yeah. There's a, you know, day in and day out, you need to be on it or you're, 
you're gonna have failure down the line. Yeah. So and that's one thing I've noticed with Jeff. I've been hunting gosh with him for close to ten years now, and and at first his gun selection for clients to use was pretty small people ringing up their own and. And they're just a lot of malfunction. You know, these aren't, uh, you know, go out in your backyard, you know, hunts type of thing. Well, for a lot of people, it's a once in a lifetime hunt coming up for, for king eiders, emperor goose, uh, common eiders, whatever it is. So building up an, an arsenal of guns that he knows works is very key, not only for him making a living at this, but also for clients. Another thing, um, you, you know, when you're out there in the saltwater condition, you know, carrying a gun, you're gonna get salt water dripping off your waders if you're with a dog that comes in and shakes. You know, even if you don't fire a shot, I think it's important to keep those guns clean and working. Yeah, I mean, people come a long way, got a lot invested in this trip. The last thing you want is a gun failing, you know, and I've been there. You I, know. I brought up a gun one time and I was excited to try it. It was working great for me in Oregon and got up here in the salt water and it didn't work good. And when I had two big, uh, great common eiders swimming out in front of me, I wasn't happy. There was yeah. a guy in camp said, take this, gave me an old 870, you know, one of, one of the ones that same one I grew up hunting basically with in high school and just just plowed him with that thing. Shot great, you know, a workhorse. So, so again, if you're coming up to Alaska, like Jeff said, make sure you know your guns, make sure you know the loads and how they're shooting your chokes and everything. It's a lot more specialized today, you know, than it was 30, 40 years ago. And uh, and be sure and keep those things in good working order. So what, when does your season start? September 1st, the general waterfowl season. Right, so we, we start September 1st uh, here in Cold Bay and we the last day we can hunt is December 16th. Uh, and then we generally have a four or five day transition from here to St. Paul and the last day we can hunt there is January 22nd. So uh, over the last you know 15, 20 years hunting in Alaska, like I've learned the hard way, right? The school of hard knocks, what's gonna work, what's not in salt in the sand. And uh, luckily the guns are a lot better today. There's other companies that make great guns too. Yeah. But, uh, those A four hundreds, I mean, they they they're expensive, but you know, the lifetime of the weapon, it's it's gonna hold up. If you want salt, no question, I would I would get one of them. Yeah, there you go. Some good advice from a seasoned hunter, and uh, tell you what, we're gonna clean up a few guns here and get back after it because the brand are out there flying. <laughs>